There's only one way to describe the chefs I'm gonna be talking about today. Crap on top of crap on top of crap on top of crap. Need I say more? Interestingly enough, some of these villains from Hell's Kitchen turn out to be villains in real life as well. I mean, Jason Underwood and Frank Calla have been talked about enough. But here are a bunch of other chefs who rub me the wrong way. Like this dude right here. And I'm a muscle ass. Yeah, Brett really said the N-word on national television. Now, there is no excuse, but if you still have any doubts, the season 3 winner Rock Harper tweeted this. He made it loud and clear that in no context is it okay for a white chef to say the N-word. Pause the video now and read his words carefully. He was referring to someone else, but the point still stands. One of the quotes on Rock's tweet aptly sums it up. This shouldn't even be a question. A workplace should create an inclusive space at all times that includes language. Words have power. The history of a word matters as long as the effects of that history are still felt. So yeah, Brett was definitely in the wrong here. But even not keeping that in mind, he was all over the place on a good day. Brett, how many kids you got? A 10-year-old daughter and a 3-year-old stepdaughter-ish, I guess you could say. I'm sure there's more out there that I don't know about, they don't want to tell me about, to be honest with you. Nah, maybe like six. Oh, wait, it's not over. I loved the woman before, but not really. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but like it's weird because then I'm like, you know, I ran through so many broads. Uh. One of the many barriers blocking women from leadership positions is the unfair stereotype that they're overly emotional. Well, what about Brett being so volatile then? I feel like I should go home tonight, so I'm so much. Dave, thank you. I love y'all. Everything. Later. And so prone to breakdowns. Oh, I ain't came out here to fucking lose. I'm fucking Furious. Honestly, I feel people around him had to walk on eggshells. So if women do it, they're too emotional. And if he does it, then what? Passion? Not to forget that he took part in the Trev hate train and bullying in season 18. Ugh, anyway, I'm not sure if any of you knew about this, but surprisingly, Matt from season 16 is a pretty big racist. There was an exchange between Matt and Hassan on Facebook where Matt was spewing racist bullshit like implying that Hassan should leave America. Thankfully, he was called out for it. So, Matt is your typical ignorant wannabe gangster. Him and Jason Underwood could definitely be best friends. Anyway, viewers have rightly criticized him too. And by the way, his performance on the show was just as pathetic. During the first dinner service, Matt found himself on the fish station alongside Gennaro. An argument ensued with Andrew over the state of the scallops, as Matt insisted they were still raw. When he eventually sent the scallops to the pass, they were indeed undercooked, prompting Chef Ramsay to demand accountability. Threatening to eject both Matt and Andrew if they didn't confess, Matt pointed fingers at Andrew, even suggesting reviewing the camera footage for proof. Chef Ramsay, unimpressed, sternly instructed him to disregard the cameras, emphasizing the importance of sending perfectly cooked scallops regardless of who was watching. What's more, he also advised him to adjust his attitude while he was at it. The camera, unfold your arms now and don't give me a scallop unless it's cooked perfectly. You get it? The attitude, cook it or off. Sometime later, he lied when his sea bass came out raw. Then, during the ostrich meat challenge, Matt presented a grilled ostrich dish with caramelized carrots and Hawaiian pico de gallo. But in the end, it received criticism from Lorraine, which the former didn't take very gracefully. It's like three people sitting at a table. That don't even make no sense to me. It just irritated me. Not only is it irritating, it's embarrassing. He simply had zero regard for professional feedback. His performance in this round contributed to the blue team losing the challenge 1-3. However, Matt was just as sour as ever and got really frustrated with the competition. He even claimed that the judges didn't know what they were talking about. And to make things even worse, he boycotted the punishment. I don't want to sit here and listen to these guys degrading me and talking It's just really starting to irk me. He was a rebel without a cause. Actually, more like disrespectful punk. I'm gonna pack my up and roll my out of here. Take the punishment like a man. that, yo. I'm not doing it. Later, sous chef Aaron summoned Matt to meet with Chef Ramsay in his office. Matt voiced his dissatisfaction with what he perceived as unfair treatment for the blue team and insisted that he cooked his dishes according to the given instructions. Chef Ramsay, however, reminded him that the judges' decisions were final and if he wasn't up for the competition, he wouldn't stand in his way. Despite initially expressing a desire not to quit, Chef Ramsay emphasized that the competition would have its highs and lows, right? Well, I think Matt's overall behavior showcased a lack of competence and a tendency to make excuses rather than facing the challenges head on. They're going to call it as they say it. And you feel that you aren't good enough to win this. I'm not going to force you to stay, buddy. This journey is about ups and downs. He's a child who was never told no, which explains why he was still throwing tantrums even at his age. 
Now, during the Creative Sliders Challenge, Matt asserted his desire to showcase seafood, dismissing concerns about his teammates' opinions. When faced with the unconventional task of grabbing ingredients from an inflatable bounce house, he sarcastically remarked that it wasn't a five-year-old birthday party. Opting for onions, he took the opportunity to revolutionize his slider during the cooking process. As the first person from the red team to have his dish judged, Matt presented a shrimp roll with chipotle aioli, challenging the concept of the challenge itself. When criticized for not meeting the challenge's expectations and told that it was more of a roll than a slider, he argued that his team didn't understand his innovative approach. So a lobster roll is a lobster roll, and then a slider is something completely- I didn't say it was a lobster roll, because it's made with shrimp, obviously. First of all, how dare he talk over Chef Christina? And then, despite Chef Ramsay's snarky remark about making a lobster patty for a lobster roll request, Matt persisted, claiming that he was doing something different. If I asked you for a lobster roll, would you do me a slider? <laughs> slider is. The dish faced criticism for being excessively spicy with wilted greens, but Matt arrogantly brushed off their opinions. What the f do they know? That's why they're running burger joints. Yeah, 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 like whatever. Ultimately, Matt lost the round to Polly, but rather than acknowledging his shortcomings, he kept that arrogant act up. He also dismissed that defeat with a casual nonchalance. And let's not forget how he threatened Chef Ramsay with literal physical violence during his exit interview. Because, like, at that point, why not? The whole time I've been here, it's been nothing but disrespect. If I was on the street right now, and he came up to me with that same I him up, point blank. Oh, so you want to end up in jail like Ben Kaler for assault, right? Now here's something interesting I found. A server who once worked alongside Mark from season 19 took to Reddit to share that he took one of his friends from New York to dine at his restaurant. Unfortunately, the experience turned out to be a major letdown, harrowing in fact. The food was subpar, dry, and took an eternity to arrive. Frustrated by the disappointing experience, the server decided to leave an online review. However, instead of taking it professionally, Mark went off the deep end. He discovered the review and in a shockingly unprofessional move, started harassing the server. This included attempting video calls, crossing a line that most definitely shouldn't be crossed. The server also confirmed that Mark was abusive to the cooks. See, he's not the only one who has bad reviews for Mark. Another customer said, The kitchen, with their celebrity chef, fresh from being eliminated early on on Hell's Kitchen, took the overcooked eggs which had the sauce and cheese on them off of the bowl and topped it off with two undercooked eggs, whites were still raw and clear. Not only were they raw, they were naked. No additional cheese or sauce, just two inedible eggs. But why am I even surprised? It was evident from the show that Mark had a very hard time accepting criticism. You are super aggressive. Most of the people on this team say the exact same thing. And so if you don't want it's there to be problems- It's an alignment, man, come it's... on. He definitely overstayed his welcome and his lack of self-awareness was so hard to miss. He had a tendency to talk over everyone else, which really rubbed me the wrong way, even with a likable cast that season. What's more, he boldly said how he was better than Declan and Amber during his elimination, which is simply far from the truth, especially with Declan. Like, who is he trying to fool? My vote is Declan and Amber. You think you're a better chef than Declan? I do. You think you're a better chef than me? I'm convinced of it. Not a single humble bone in his body. Anyway, prior to his last dinner service, Mark took charge of the appetizer station. When faced with a critical 12-top table order, Chef Ramsay issued a stern warning for him to deliver his absolute best. He made it clear that he wouldn't tolerate any shortcomings. Recognizing the need for assistance, Cody volunteered to handle the risotto, allowing Mark to concentrate on the carbonara. However, Mark's disorganization became evident when he couldn't locate the capers. In an attempt to guide him, Cody took the reins on the appetizer station. I need white wine. I don't have white wine. Get it together, man. Do you need me to go off wine? White wine, wine, please, yes. Dinner service is starting up and Mark's already in a hay. Subsequently, Declan discovered that his flat top had been off the entire time, leading him to accuse Cody of turning it off when he was prepping the risotto. In response, he shut Cody out when the latter attempted to offer input on the risotto. Who turned it off? Cody made the last risotto. Cody did. He cooked the risotto right here. Unfortunately, his efforts resulted in a lackluster risotto and a curdled carbonara. That's curdled overcooked. There's no fucking seasoning Mark, in no, that. If I tell you it's not ready, it's not ready. After Chef Ramsay showcased the disappointing dishes to the blue team, how was his refire? Well, considering Chef Ramsay's reaction, I don't think it was much better. That's disgusting. In the aftermath, Chef Ramsay gathered the blue team to taste the dish, pulling Mark into the back pantry room. So far, nothing's come yes, out chef. on point. I'm warning you, get a grip yes, now. Chef. Yes, chef. Following the loss in service, the blue team faced the task of nominating two members for elimination. And then, during the deliberations, Mark nominated Declan and Amber. 
He asserted that he outperformed the two and highlighted the significant issues with the meat and fish dishes that night. However, Cody countered by nominating Mark, accusing him of being responsible for the team's downfall and once again suggesting he turned off the oven. Denying the accusation, Cody maintained that his flat top had been consistently on throughout his time on Hell's Kitchen. Amidst the discussion, Amber pointed out Mark's inconsistencies in timing and argued for his elimination. Tensions flared as Declan accused Mark of dragging down the entire team, leading to Mark storming out of the dorms in frustration. I can cook way you better than that. You deserve to go home. I can home. cook the whole night. You know what? Then I won't talk then. Fuck you guys. In the end, pretty predictably, Mark emerged as the blue team's first nominee for elimination, with Cody being the second. And during his plea, Mark claimed that he had bounced back and accused the blue team of playing politics to protect themselves. Is that true, Declan? Not a fuck chance, Chef. We carried him. We looked after him. We helped him set up. Despite their protests, Chef Ramsay expressed disappointment in the lackluster risottos and overcooked carbonara, ultimately eliminating Mark for that and, well, so, so much more. They were out to get me from the beginning. My team let me down a long time ago. Ah, oh, yeah, truly one of the most satisfying eliminations ever. I mean, props to Cody for nominating himself to take that risk. Now, I have a question. Do you think that just because you appeared on one reality TV competition, it gives you the right to call yourself a celebrity chef? Mind you, you didn't even perform well on the show. For me, I don't think so, but guess what? The winner of season 10 has the goal to call himself one. The winner of Hell's Kitchen is Tavon. Confused? Honestly, me too, but let me try to explain. I'm talking about Tavon, whose achievements include, uh, winning against the lying, conniving, manipulative Tiffany, I guess? No, but seriously, even Chef Christina Wilson doesn't proclaim herself to be a celebrity chef, and she has every right to. She'd rather let her work do the talking. Unlike Tavon, who's just a selfish jerk. And why do I say this? You see, Tavon has a cooking class by the name of Celebrity Chef Tav. Good grief the narcissism. Now, one review in particular caught my attention. It read, I booked a special dinner, or so I thought. This chef was an absolute walking disaster. Food is disgusting, and I wouldn't read it any better than cafeteria food. I mean, if anyone saw how spectacularly he failed his first service on the show, they know he's a fluke. Are you serious that you're an executive chef? You're yeah, a chef. I actually yeah. yeah. But wait, 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 there's way more. Another person said that he basically ripped them off. Turns out, they bought a Groupon for the kids' cooking class, which was supposed to be an eight-week session. But when they arrived, nobody was around to relieve them. After a 30-minute wait time and endless calls and emails to the contacts provided, they had to return empty-handed having wasted their precious time and money. While I really hope they got some form of compensation, it isn't the only review that put Tavon's unprofessionalism on blast. Tavon has been a no-show on several occasions despite promising to, you know, actually do his damn job. So now, let's get to the main question here. What happened, Tavon? Why didn't you show up? Did you freeze? I guess I froze. You froze? What else, what else do you want me to say? You haven't even fucking defrosted. Well, that's just something he pulled off in a tight situation. Was it his escape mechanism? Well, maybe. Anyway, turns out, a couple years back, his organization went kaput. But I mean, are you honestly surprised? The whole setup was a mess. But if I have to highlight this time on the show, I'd go with the signature dish challenge when Tavon faced Chef Ramsay as the eighth contender from the blue team pitted against Dana. I'm an executive chef in DC. And how old are you? I'm only 22. You're 22 and you're an executive chef running a brigade of chefs? Yeah. Yeah, pretty sketchy. Most people start as dishwashers at that age and have to work their way up. Anyway, he presented a dish with shrimp, scallops, and crab over fettuccine alfredo and a whiskey-infused sauce. Unfortunately, Chef Ramsay's verdict wasn't exactly kind. But I mean, drowning it in vinegar wasn't going to earn him anything but... How much vinegar did you put in there? Uh, like a drizzle. Drizzle? Well, more than a drizzle. I mean, it's hideous. Losing the round to Dana, Tavon took offense at the judgment. First time anybody said my food was so fucked up on so many different levels. This is horrible. First time? Okay, believable. But certainly wasn't his last time. Tavon held down the appetizer station alongside Guy and Royce. His blunder came to light when he sent out raw pigeons, prompting Chef Ramsay to question if he genuinely held the title of executive chef. This fucking pigeon's that raw, it can still fly. Don't fucking cold and raw. Are you serious that you're an executive chef? You're yeah, a chef. As the night unfolded, it was revealed that Tavon's subpar slicing skills had sabotaged Justin's scallops, drawing harsh criticism from Chef Ramsay and the team. You sabotaged them. This is ugly. Scallops were just mutilated. Looked like they got caught with a paperclip. We're in trouble. 
Hold on, it only gets better. Avon treated those scallops like a homeless rat. Accurate. In the face of Chef Ramsay's frustration, Tavon's excuse was that he simply froze. When the famous chef confronted him about his poor performance despite his executive chef status, Tavon nonchalantly claimed that he hadn't even defrosted yet. This response angered Chef Ramsay, leading to Tavon getting kicked out of the kitchen and sent to the dorms. First time I've ever been kicked out of the kitchen in my career. Chef Ramsay, you're a fucking douchebag. See ya, pal. But here comes the uh, creepiest contestant of them all. I'm an ass man, and the girl definitely has a little booty on her. You were just an ass man. And by the way, plenty of people have pointed out his weird comment about the sorority girls. All these sorority girls coming running out from every door, all different directions. That's the kind of girl I used to look for when I was at a dirty parties getting drunk. Now, in all honesty, Anton was very skilled in the kitchen. Me and Chef Ramsay are exactly the same person. He's gonna love me like any father would. That's an exaggeration, but yeah, you get the point, right? He was a strong chef, except his attitude absolutely sucked. I don't get people who always act like the victim and act as if the entire world is out to get them. So this is my time to really get Anton fucked. In season 12, during the 14th dinner service, Anton found himself getting flustered on the meat station. Kasia presented her salmon, but he insisted that he needed an additional 10 minutes for the Wellingtons, much to the dismay of the restless red diners. 10 minutes! Yes, chef. She's running over the salmon. He's fucking 10 minutes away! However, when Scott eventually sliced his Wellingtons, they turned out to be overcooked. It's overcooked. Yep. That's overcooked too, man. That's, those are all over. Losing his patience, the famous chef reprimanded Anton for it, but Anton? Well, he had some serious beef with the ovens, senselessly claiming that they were different from the ones in the blue kitchen. These are not a little over. That's way over, yes. Obviously, I screwed it up with the oven. Next door's oven, I got it down pat. This one, I screwed it up. Sous chef Andy attempted to clarify the situation, mentioning that she had informed the red team about proper oven temperatures and timings. However, he completely dismissed her. Don't think I'm gonna let some little girl get in my face, start ripping a new ass, because you got issues on being a woman in the kitchen. I mean, a woman's place is in the kitchen? Or what is a woman doing in the kitchen? Which one is it for misogynists, right? Like, pick a lane. Oh, and what is that little girl comment all about? You mean Gordon Ramsay's sous chef? I mean, the audacity at this point couldn't get worse. He definitely felt threatened by a woman of authority. When sous chef Andy started getting fed up with Anton's backtalk, he claimed that she would never be able to break him. If you ask me, I think the dude intentionally decided to get on her nerves, claiming that he had it all together. Well, that really set off sous chef Andy, and she screamed at him for mouthing off. And pull it together! I have it together, chef! Don't you fucking talk back! Don't you ever I'm talk not back! I'm back! Yes, you are! Pull it together! Witnessing the disrespect, the famous chef then dragged him into the pantry room, with Scott predicting that he was heading for a crash and burn. But Anton, still claiming that he had it together, couldn't save those out-of-control Wellingtons. You're not communicating. Your head's in the fucking sand. I need you to rise. Get it back together. Yes, chef. The red team took a beating, and Chef Ramsay didn't hold back on Anton, telling him that he basically sank the ship. Anton again tried blaming the oven, but Chef Ramsay shut that down real quick, reminding him that both kitchens had the same damn ovens. That oven there is the exact same as that oven. I'm just saying, I should have went in there and checked the oven myself. When it came to the nominations, the red team had to pick two for the chopping block as always. In the discussion, Anton boasted about being a natural leader, but Joy didn't let him off easy, calling him out for his disrespectful attitude. I know I'm a natural born leader. It's just part of who I am. Do I deserve to be up there? Not at all. I'm sorry, that whole incident in that scene with Chef Andy? No, when she says something, it fucking go. You just shut the fuck up and take it. In his plea, he boldly asserted that he knew exactly who he was, urging Chef Ramsay to acknowledge it too. However, Chef Ramsay was not swayed at all. You peaked a few services ago. What I'm worried about is this downward viral. Why can't you talk when you're in the weeds? Yeah, even his emotional maturity peaked in high school. When questioned about his silence during the chaotic moments, Anton dismissed it as a non-issue for him, though he conceded that he could work on it. I really feel like that was an issue for me, but clearly you feel that's an issue. If that's something I need to work on, then I have to work on. Ultimately, Anton got the axe for his lackluster meat performance, sour attitude, reluctance to admit his faults, and way more. Even while exiting the competition, he remained cocky. One day, Chef Ramsay and I will meet again. Maybe next time it'll be his restaurant next door to mine. I didn't walk away with the crown, but I was the best out of everybody in there. So that makes me the winner of Hell's Kitchen, in my opinion. Such crazy levels of delusion. 
And oh, I'm still waiting for the day when Chef Ramsay will open a restaurant next to Anton's. You know, come to think of it, sabotage Sarah from season 2, Johnny from season 16 for taking sadistic pleasure in making women cry, and Scott Lee for bullying were also pretty evil. But who else would you add to this list? Let me know in the comments section down below. And before you leave, make sure to smack that like button, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, make sure to visit my social media pages to stay up to date with all my latest content. And don't forget to check out my latest video right here since it's even crazier.